to show you one of my favorite tools. It's actually two of my favorite tools, and they are a pair. First of all, this is called a fro. The tool that goes with the fro is the maul, also known as a fro club or a beetle. First, let's look at the fro. The fro is a splitting tool. It has a handle here, otherwise known as a haft, I believe, and the blade is down here. The lower portion of the blade is beveled, but not extremely sharp, and the upper portion of the blade is blunt and designed to be hit with a striking tool. You can kind of think of the fro as a precision splitting tool, but instead of swinging the tool, you swing your striking tool and you hit the back of the fro. Traditionally, fros were used for splitting shingles. Another purpose for a fro that you might not know about is what's called riving. And riving is an old way of making lumber. Imagine in the old days, far, far out in the woods, if you were settling as a pioneer and you wanted to make some furniture, you were not going to have a sawmill. A fro was used to actually split panels and split boards. And they'd be finished with a draw knife. When you look at a piece of sawn lumber like this one, this board right here, you see the grain will run all different directions. The saw blade will cut through um, knots, it'll cut through crooked grain. And so the potentiality here is that sawn lumber can actually be weaker and more prone to twisting and bending as it dries or with moisture changes. When you rive lumber or split it with a fro, you end up with all of your wood having perfectly straight grain running end to end through your board. This makes for extremely stable wood and it allowed early settlers in this country in rural areas with no sawmills to actually make green wood um, furniture, they would make chairs, they would make paneling, and it would remain very stable because the grain was perfectly straight. If you were to take sawn green wood and attempt to make furniture out of it, it would basically be disastrous. It will move as it dries. The difference between sawn and split lumber is dramatic. Look at the handle on my fro. The grain is perfectly straight. And the reason the grain's perfectly straight on the fro is because I actually made this handle by splitting this handle out of a perfectly straight piece of wood. Every single grain runs from end to end incredibly strong. Let's contrast that to this handle on this nice little Husqvarna hatchet. I love this hatchet by the way and I don't think the handle will break. When you look at the handle right here, you see these little um, grain runs that go down and back. This handle potentially could actually split off along those grains. Those grains run sideways on this side and that weakens the handle right here. So when you're buying a tool handle, always look at the grain. Look for the straightest grain. Look for grain that runs all the way down the handle. Let's talk for a minute about making your own maul. I recommend dogwood. Dogwood is extremely heavy and tough. This was a dogwood tree. The level of the ground on this tree was right here. So I actually dug this tree out of the ground. The roots came off of this part of the tree in every direction and the grain inside of this um, is incredibly convoluted. This is almost impossible to split. Look, I'm just pounding this on this rock and it is solid, it's not splitting, it's not cracking. So knowing the characteristics of different woods can be extremely valuable and using the right wood and even the right part of the right wood or wood cut or split in the right way is something that will benefit you if you're doing any sort of tool making or woodworking. You don't have to be an expert to take advantage of these small pieces of information. Another great use for a fro that might be applicable to the most people is splitting kindling. One advantage of a fro is it's a lot safer than a hatchet or an ax. The only risk here is that you would actually hit yourself with this but you're not swinging any blade. It's quite a bit safer than a hatchet. I'm just gonna split this. It looks like a little cherry log right down the middle, ideally. And we're gonna start it in with some serious pounding. This is referred to as bonking in some circles. 
when you're splitting shingles, there's a lot of pulling and twisting to direct the direction of your split. So there's our little log split in half. There I have a slab. I could finish this off with a draw knife. This is a dry tool popper log. It would be much easier to split green. So here I have a square tulip poplar um, stick that I've split. You can see that it would be quite challenging to make this with just a hatchet or an ax, though you could do it. And this is something that could be finished with a draw knife and made to actually be square and used in any application. This one I got at an antique shop. I put a new handle on it and it's ready for a hundred more years of service. I hope this was valuable to you today or at least you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in tomorrow's video. I also want to say thanks to our Patreon supporters. We actually have two videos over on Patreon now. One of them's on Comfrey and one of them's on creativity in our homestead. We're going to keep putting some content over there, kind of extra videos. That was another great day on the homestead. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Oh, by the way, we've been having crazy internet issues. That's why our videos are uploading at every hour of the day instead of first thing in the morning. Hopefully that'll get fixed soon.